one other common application of a quadratic equation is using it, a quadratic equation to model a falling object or an object that's been thrown and just has gravity uh, being applied to it. So uh, in this equation, we've got a bunch of things that we have to keep track of. So first of all, h is going to represent the height of the object in feet. Then this negative 16 that's in front of the t squared is the constant that's going to be applied uh, that represents gravity. The t in our equation is going to be the time in seconds. So we see t squared, and then we see t later on in the equation. And then the other two uh, things that we see are this v with a subscript of zero, so v sub zero and h sub zero. And those represent the initial velocity. So if the object is thrown upwards into the air or if it's launched off of a baseball bat, for example, or something, then that number is going to be positive. If we're throwing something down, then that number is going to be negative. And then the h sub zero, this last number, is the initial height, the starting height of the object. So we can use this equation to model the flight of an object that's being pulled down by gravity even if it's been tossed up into the air. So in the example that we have here, uh, you're standing atop a cliff in Yosemite and there's a hiker that throws down a rock to a river that's in a canyon below with an initial velocity of 25 feet per second. So since we're throwing that down, that's going to be our v sub zero and it's going to be negative 25. If we were throwing it up, then it would be positive 25. And then it says that the cliff is 500 feet above the river. So that represents our initial height. So that's going to be our h sub 0 in our equation, which is going to be 500 then. And so we're asked how long will it take for the rock to make it all the way down to the river, which would imply that we're hitting the ground. So then that means our final h is going to be 0. So then the remaining variable that we need to solve for is t. So using this full equation then, I'm going to replace h with 0 equals, then I've got negative 16 t squared, then I've got the v sub 0, we establish as negative 25 because the hiker throws the rock down, so it's going to be minus 25 t, and then I've got plus my h sub 0, my initial height is 500. So once again, we're going to use the quadratic formula to solve this guy. One thing I am going to do, just because I'm more comfortable with my t squared or my x squared term being positive, I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything or divide everything by negative 1. It doesn't change the outcome, it just uh, switches all the positive and negative signs. So I'm going to make that positive, that positive, and then make that a minus 500. So now I'm ready to plug into my quadratic formula. So if we start off, we've got x equals or really it's t equals in this case, but it doesn't really matter. So we've got negative b, so negative 25, plus or minus the square root of, six, it's going to be 25 squared, so b squared, 25 squared, minus 4 times a is 16, times c is negative 500, and then in the bottom, we have 2 times a, so 2 times 16. The other reason I like to make sure that that t squared term is positive is that it makes the denominator positive. It just makes life a little bit easier. So I'm going to scroll down to give ourselves a little space. So now we've got x equals negative 25 plus or minus. Now 25 squared on our calculator is 625. Let's try that again, make that look like a 5. And then minus or uh, negative 4 times 16 times negative 500. So we have a negative times a negative, so that's actually going to be a positive. And then if we multiply 4 times 16 times 500, we end up with a large number. It's 32,000. And then in the denominator, we've got 2 times 16, which is 32. So if we keep on going, move over this way a little bit, got x equals, so we still have that negative 25, plus or minus, and so now that's the square root of, if we add those two together, 32,625 all over 32. So now we're ready to break out our calculator and do the square root of three uh, 32,625, 
And so if we round off to the nearest hundredth, that's what we were kind of asked to do here. I'm going to get 180.62. So I'm just using my calculator to get that. And again, we don't want to forget that we're all over 32. So we're getting close to the finish line. We've got x equals, so negative 25 plus 180. I'm going to get positive 150.62 all over 32. And then if I do negative 25 minus 180, I'm clearly going to get a negative number. Now I can't have a negative amount of time that the rock is going to take to fall all the way down. So I'm just not even going to bother trying to do that part of the problem. I'm just going to focus on the par part of the answer that makes sense, which is this positive result. And so the last thing we've got to do is divide this uh, 155, that should be, so sorry about the lag on the pen, so 155.62 divided by 32. And so in the end, we get a time of 4.86 seconds for this rock to leave the hiker's hand thrown down with an initial velocity of 25 feet per second to make it down to the uh, river below, 500 feet below, it's going to take 4.86 seconds.